yeah, this will be really interesting when they go back and watch the VOD and then like Sarah has candidate moves and then she'll listen to what Mr. Yash suggested as the candidate moves and then compare and contrast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Yeah, it checks like keeps your options and uh makes white to make a commit committing move, right? What's your favorite of the various choices, Mr. Pavlikich? I don't know. I don't like moving the knight. <laughs> I don't like castling because it's all bad. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's... Moving the knight is... I don't know. don't want to move it yet because I want to play bishop e7 first before moving the knight. Okay, somebody says, Yo, sup, Zephyrs. Sup, Mr. Imnotism. But h6 is... Uh, I, I would play h6, maybe. Zephyrs. Isn't a zephyr a like a type move. of storm or something? Like a Zephyr. Zephyr. I thought it was like a uh, like a blimp. Oh, hold on. We gotta like look this a, up. Ah. Yeah. Like Z E P H Y. Oh, okay. Zephyr is it's just a it's a it's a gust yeah. of wind, basically. Okay, oh, so okay. it's like a, right. but it could be yeah. brands of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So more like knife F knife F five. Okay, so we can add that to the list. Yeah, apparently we are gusts of wind. Nice. H six is a position level. I like those. Yeah, yeah, but but, you also but yeah, I think she has other pieces, right? Yeah, I think she has a lot of. I think she has diff a lot of different ways to play here. Actually, I guess if I had to yeah. choose between knight c six and knight f five, though, I think I might prefer knight c six because I like being able to put pressure on the e five pawn. I don't think I can do that as mm -hmm. easily with my knight on f five. Well, yes, that, and you also have many jumps to the center. Yeah. Yep. But you do have from f <laughs> five, but it's not as you know, aesthetic. I'm not sure what Tristan's trying to say, but he's mad at the autocorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Tristan the Zeppelin. Is <laughs> yes, the Zeppelin is definitely yeah. That's yes, a, yes, yes. Zeppelin. There are fewer than twenty blimps in the whole world. Maybe even less than ten. Uh. I don't even ever. I don't even ever recall seeing more than one at a time. So I can't confirm that. Maybe <laughs> I. I believe you. I have no idea. I don't know anything about blimps. I don't either. Not at all. Yeah, but the chat seems to know all kinds of stuff. We spent our lives, you know, on a board game. You guys learned actual important stuff like this. <laughs> I saw a blimp fly right by apartment balcony. Hopefully, it wasn't like. That close, monk ass. I mean, right by. It's like the Chili Pepper song, "Fly Away on My Zephyr." So now, oh, is that a thing? Actually, know what that means? Yeah, now we actually know what that oh, means. Oh wow, so that's pretty good. I feel Very like that. Nice. Yeah, and that integrates well with the stream because I know that that's uh, that people in the stream. We've got some Chili Peppers people, so now we we have like a brand that we can go for. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sarah was wearing a chili pepper shirt yesterday, actually. I believe you. That seems like something that yeah. she might do. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. As of August 11th, there are 25 blimp D according to Metnol Floss. Uh, mm. I assume that's blimps and mental floss. WTF is going on here, says some dude. <laughs> Well, we're we're uh, analyzing a chess position. So Sarah has a pretty wide choice here. So we're just kind of chilling. We have a, we have a lot of candidate moves that are possible. Josh is suggesting h6 with the potential idea of g5 or castles along because it prevents knight g5. Bishop b7 is a pretty obvious candidate move because the bishop is kind of out of a job otherwise. And knight c6 justifies knight e7. So these are probably the candidate moves. Why are they not playing? Where are the players? Well, the players are kind of hard to see on the screen because the screen is only showing the board. And why are they not playing? Because it's a long time control game. So they have a lot of time. Somebody just followed or something. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, somebody's walking around. Sarah's walking around. Is that Sarah? I think it's Sarah. I don't, I don't know. know. I died. Your guess is as good as mine. Can we see I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe it's wrong. Why are some rando nerds commenting some some literally who's playing? <laughs> I 
Uh, okay, I think that that's not a reading comprehension error on my end. I think probably that's not a well-written comment. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I am a I doofus, agree, yeah. so I make a lot of reading comprehension errors, but I think in this particular case, it's it's not a doof error. Oh yeah, that was important. So yeah, this this is another thing. So there were competing brands of soda because Daniel was drinking something that was not the Olipop. And yes. that was a topic of discussion before the the game. So Daniel is like f fighting for a different sponsorship or something. Yeah. Oh, those were Daniel's man legs. Oh, yeah, so maybe maybe somebody's that, That's straight sponsoring. from the manufacturer by the way. So <laughs> Daniel could have put some pants on for the stream at least, says Tristan. Uh, someone asked uh, to show the game from the beginning. So uh, should we do that? Yeah, you can do that if you want. Oh god. I just do the moves, you can talk. Um. Yeah, I actually haven't seen it from the beginning, so yeah. That sounds... Are you guys getting paid for this? No, we're getting we're getting paid <laughs> no. in enjoyment. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Chilato. Chilato, yeah. yeah. So it was E4, E5, and then Scotch, I guess. Oh god, we have a move. We have a move, it's Rook B8, but we'll get to it in a second. Let's show the, okay. show the game for this Rook dude. B8. Yeah, we okay. followed theory for a while. Yes. So, Knight of 6 Knight C6, and of course, Sarah hasn't played this position before, or at least not often. Yeah. So, yeah, Daniel got play... up a lot of time in this. Yeah, she played the white side quite a bit, where instead of knight takes c6, she would play knight c3, the four knights scotch. Uh -huh. And this is called the uh, Mises, when they take on c6 and play e5. I seem to recall there's some endgame in these lines that like I never actually see happen, but like supposedly it happens at a high level sometimes, where the, where like white gets... They get like a rook and two pawns, and black gets two minor pieces, and I don't remember mm -hmm. how that actually happens. Because uh, I was thinking yeah. about how it happened, and I was like going to show it, and then I was like, I have no idea how that even happens, so I shouldn't try to show something that I don't know what I'm talking about. But maybe you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the exact variation, but I know I know what you what you mean, though. Yeah, that that line, and it seems like Black always does pretty well too. Um, mm -hmm. But it's been played many many times. Like there are many games there. Okay, so Salopata says exposing themselves as Dingus says, "No, I'm a doofus. I'm not a Dingus. I, I might." I think we've been over this. <laughs> we need to have yeah. the correct terminology. Yeah, we, we followed there for a bit. I mean, uh, yeah, after e5, you cannot take the knight because it's illegal. I have to. Yes, it. and yeah, there's no cheating in this game, so he's definitely not gonna not gonna break the rules of chess. Yeah, Josh. Yeah, queen e7 is actually a really important move because, um, for instance, like if white if black plays knight d5, then white can just play bishop d3, and white's already like clearly better because there's no. Yeah, okay. There's basically no compensation for black having a worse structure and less space because white can just finish his development really easily with like just castles mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. f4 if he needs, and, and white's already much better. But when you force white to play queen e2, then it really slows white down because um, he has to play like g3, bishop g2, to, or, or you know, something like he did in the game to try to get yeah. the bishop out. And then black can really, uh, being ahead in development, black can. Uh, compensate for the extra yeah, space. That makes sense. Very difficult to play Bishop D3 now. It requires a lot of cheating. Like, you yes. know, just total, <laughs> exactly. total disrespect of the rules. So they weren't going to exactly. do that. These are two law-abiding citizens here in this game. Now here, I didn't know if Sarah's prep was Knight B6 or Bishop A6 because I know people who do both, but Sarah played Bishop A6, which sure. Yeah. And then oh, Knight yeah. D2, and we followed some more theory. Now, I think that Daniel had probably seen this position somewhere in the back of his mind, because it didn't take him that long before he played King D1, yes. which uh, is the main mm -hmm. move. So, right. you know, he's a, right. he's a pretty well-booked-up quadruped. And then uh, and then he played, yeah, I, I was suggesting this Queen D2 move, because otherwise it's kind of annoying having this King in the center with this pin. Queen D2 gets out of the pin and forces a trade of Queens, because otherwise the Knight is hanging. So then that's how we got the end game that we're dealing with. And uh, after this, Black played Rook B8, and I guess it's Daniel's turn? There are no other moves? Yes, it is Daniel, oh, Daniel's turn. Okay, yeah, Rook B8. All right. Josh is paying Zeph with a Go date. Yeah, I heard you guys were playing uh, a lot of Go lately. I haven't played Go in literally a decade, so I pretty much forget how that works. Yeah, 
I just learned a couple of weeks ago and so did Sarah, I think. Um, oh. so yeah, we're, we're like total beginners, but, uh, improving a little bit. Yeah. But, I knew yeah. how to play it like 10 years ago. Cause I had some friends who played it, but I was terrible and then stopped and I forget everything now. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's really interesting, but it's, yeah, it's definitely, it's a lot different than chess. I don't think there's a lot that transfers over between the two. Is there a lot of calculation in Go? Or do you think it's a lot more understanding? I, or how, like, how do you think it, it's different as far as like what sorts of skills of thinking are needed? So far, I mean, I'm definitely not you know, uh, too qualified to talk about Go. But from what I've seen, at least, um, I, I would say it's... Uh, there's probably... There's quite a bit of calculation because you have to like... Um, whatever, there's like a cut. Because um, you can always like cut the other person's stones, like trying to cut them off from a group. And then there's like they call it reading and go. Uh, and reading is just basically what we would call calculation. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And there's quite a bit of that, um, and which I can't do at all. Like I'm absolutely terrible. I can't read anything. Um, <laughs> and then I just don't know. You know, I'm just kind of like totally on my own as uh, from the in the openings and go. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but then it's fun. The, right? One. Well, yeah, yeah, but one big difference is that in so in chess you want to take over the center, and in go you actually want to take you want to take over the corners. So huge difference. Like they say, chess players try to take over the center like initially, and that's just completely wrong in go. <laughs> Did you do that when you first played go? Like, was that something? That... No, because I actually read, I actually watched a, uh, a bunch of YouTube videos before I ever played. So uh, ah, they so already, you were you were well prepped. You were prepped. <laughs> yeah. Didn't Can we get the much, facial but... reactions of the players? I don't think that we're going to get the facial reactions of the players. I think that, first of all, they're probably just concentrating. and There's not much in the way of facial reactions. Secondly, the players are off-screen. Zefcat is a bit to the right uh, off-screen. Camel Clutcher is a bit to the left. Unless one or both of them left and I wasn't paying attention, which is also possible. Uh, but, <laughs> the, yeah, I don't think that they're going to adjust the camera to show the facial reactions. It's probably not much to look at anyway. They're just focusing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I always thought that Go was like positional stuff. Like it's just a bunch of pawns, and you have to take care of them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. The, the other game I was I was kind of interested in. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go. No, no I'm in the. Oh, the the other game I I was kind of interested in too was Shogi. Uh, it just seems really interesting as well, but. Uh -huh. I haven't found like there don't appear to be a whole lot of resources like if you don't speak Japanese it's kind of it seems like kind of hard to to pick up the game. Okay, um, we have a move here. We got B three. Yeah. B three. The... I think Mister Spinal Tap is pretty good at showing you, but don't quote me on that. I think so. Uh -huh. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. I know the uh, like the longtime number one Shogi player. I think his last name is Habu H A B U. Uh, he's he's over twenty four hundred feet in chess. He played a two game match against Kasparov, like I don't know, somewhere around fifteen years ago. He lost, but <laughs> but he's pretty Dude, good. Like, I mean, he's come bad. on, man! What are you supposed to do about people who are better than you at every game that exists? I mean, if they're better than yeah. me at chess and they're also good at all the other games, then like they're just they're just superior to poor doof, man. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, tough. that's pretty impressive. I mean, yeah, that's scary. All right. So we have a chess move here, b3, uh, because I guess it attempts to blunt the rook on b8. I think that b3 was always like a possible move. I think it really says to the bishop on a6, you know, you're not doing much there. You're going to have to go to b7 at some point. Right, right. So, I mean, I, I would say, you know, I don't, I'm not that thrilled with the rook on b8 because of this, but there's another kind of interesting idea. Uh, Sarah could play is she her idea could be rook b rook e6 um, trying to put even uh -huh. more uh, yeah. pressure on the um, and that's that's pretty interesting like if that's her idea I mean I, I, I like that that's pretty cool I think like I feel like white would be doing really well if white's pawn on f2 were on f4 I think white would be doing yeah. very yeah, well in this position but right now yeah right now the knight scene is on f3 is like sort of misplaced um, at least with the pawn still on F two, it's the knight's kind of misplaced. So basically, the entire theme of this game is things blocking other things that want to move. We've seen that right. multiple times. That's the whole point of even the queen e seven thing. Yes, yes. So, 
So do we think that B3 makes the other moves that we were talking about, like Bishop B7 and Knight C6, more or less attractive? And if so, why? Like, how does I mean, it, it impact Bishop the B ideas that we talked about? Yeah, well, it, def it definitely makes Bishop B7 more attractive. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess Knight C6 might be slightly more attractive now, because now the, uh, you know, if White ever has to play A3, then the B3 pawn is a little, pawn is weak little weaker. Yeah. So. so we have some theories in the chat. So Tristan says they're playing Mario Party off screen. Uh, <laughs> it's it's definitely theoretically possible. possible. Yeah. In which board game are the commentators most accomplished in besides chess, I guess? I don't think that I'm accomplished in any other board game. I mean, I've played a lot of other board games a little bit, but I'm not accomplished in anything else. I'm not even no, accomplished I in don't. chess. So. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm definitely not accomplished in any other board game. Bob, good? Yep. Same. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we could pretty good at killing zombies. Yeah, though. I have played, I have played a decent bit of yeah. Catan, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Battle Kitchen is better than me at zombies, though. Oh, uh, well, I don't know if. I don't know if this counts, but categories I'm very good at because I played a ton of it when I was a kid. Okay. But uh, nice. that's, I don't know if that entirely counts. Googles. That's cool. That's close enough. I, yeah. Why is there a wobble in the mid of the board? Uh, oh, maybe the table's not uh, entirely even or something. No, the board is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe I think the... it's like two. It's like two tables pushed together. Could be, yeah, uh, that's uh, possible. Uh, we uh, do we just have a move here? We did. Yes, uh, Black played knight played c6, knight which either. was one of the moves we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this looks good. But see, but here, like I don't know. I'm a little bit. I would have liked like maybe rook b6 here, because it seems like like why is the rook on b8 in this position? Yeah, there's right. an argument for that. I mean, now you. Uh, you have some pieces that aren't doing a ton at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, like if she if her idea with rook b8 was to play rook b6, rook e6, I mean, that, I think that makes a lot of sense. But here I'm just like, yeah, I don't really know. And also, like, the unless she's going to play knight d4, like immediately, maybe, maybe that maybe that's her idea, like to try to play it right away. Um. But yeah, I'm kind of wondering about the bishop and the rook now on a6 and b8. So now the dude on e5 is being attacked, so we have some candidate moves. Uh, or maybe we could allow it to fall and then play rook e1 at the end. That could also be a thing. Um, but like, bishop yeah, so d3 is probably out, because I would imagine knight b4 is kind of a bit annoying in that case. Yeah, I think so. Yep, I think that's true. So technically it's not a threat to, to uh, take on e5 yet, right? Because yeah. we, yeah. So, so very, very bishop c3 could be a move. Maybe this is an h4 moment then. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they both both look good to me. Um, bishop c3, I guess I'm threatening e6 also. So that's no, pretty... Dude, that is, I didn't even notice uh, that. Uh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. So bishop c3, I mean, she probably just has to castle then. Um. Uh, no, she she can't castle. So what? Did, yeah, what does she do after Bishop C three? Actually, it's kind of annoying with the rook on D one. Uh, hmm. Is that already like a little bit of a problem? Could be. Although I didn't even notice it beforehand. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I didn't either. Uh, maybe Bishop. Maybe it might be it's so nice to have you know strong players in this call analyzing this stuff. <laughs> but maybe she has knight b4 if bishop c3 um, knight maybe b4. that's the idea that's, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah so then the point is that if the king goes to a square that defends the bishop so like b2 or d2 then it's check when you take on c3 yeah so there's no and, more e6 yeah. Yeah. okay Yeah. but you still may lose the pawn though I mean depending yeah. on what yeah, black does but like you still may lose the d pawn I mean it still looks kind of monk ass I don't know. Mm -hmm. But can you play yeah, it does. C8 maybe someday? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 not a move I really want to have to play, but it is. Yeah, it does. It would defend. It would defend the threats. 
Wait, night before just came to it. Uh, so hold on, Hyperblade. I'm not sure what you're uh, uh, referring to. So what I was saying was White doesn't want to play Bishop D3 because I think then Knight B4 is a problem. Bishop C3 is probably our leading candidate move right now. So uh, maybe you misheard me or something. Because I don't think that anybody's saying Bishop C3 Knight B4 right away. Although maybe they should be thinking about that if the E6 thing is a big problem. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I was actually, I, I was thinking Bishop C3 Knight B4. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, and then I think, I mean, I agree um, with the dude that probably King B2 makes the most sense of the various options. I mean, there's no way that White's taking that, and I think King B2 is probably a little more flexible than King B1, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was looking at some crazy lines. So, okay, say Bishop C3, Knight B4, King B2, D6, um... E takes D. Yeah. Uh, bishop takes C3. King takes. Yeah. Knight takes A2. <laughs> king B. And say if King. Uh, where would I want to go? Um, you you want to yeah, King, king B2 king? For, for, you know, trying to gain a tempo? Yeah. Yeah. King B2. And then. But I guess this is just uh no, this is just a problem. No. It looks pretty cozy for white. Just just looks bad. Yeah. Because black has kind of uh very like loose position. And yeah, white's gonna this is no. And also the yeah. I mean white's gonna get the other rook in. If they can move the bishop and play Ricky one, they're gonna have some nice pieces. Yeah, yeah. So he did he did just play bishop c three. So yeah, now she has like E6 is a real threat. She has to do something. So yeah, what does she do? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty of fond of Bishop C3. Are there any active chess players in the commentary team or is everyone retired? The most active player is Pavlikic, right? Uh, <laughs> Pavlikic did I'm, play a I'm, tournament not that long ago. I don't know who had I think the I'm definitely the least active. I, I have I did play a simul today, but that was not a tournament. I just gave a simul in my chess club. Yeah, okay. I guess I am well still that's pretty good. Pavlikic is the, the only active a player. In like three years. Yeah, I haven't, yeah. Played a, I haven't played a rated game since Amateur Team East was February. But I need to play. I, I want to play something again. I'm just, I'm, I always want everything to be perfect. Like I want to make sure that my sleep schedule is all good and the, every, that I've like done all my prep yeah, and definitely. what I'm going to be doing. And I'm, I, I just can't be fucking bothered. So <laughs> it's it's kind of a bit of a problem. <laughs> But I really should. I, I really should play again. I really should. Imagine having a good sleep schedule. Yeah. My last my last tournament game uh, was a win over Yermolinsky, and I just don't like. I just feel like I can't. You know, I don't think I'm going to do better than that. So I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to make myself play again. Well, that's that is a that is a flex. That is you just. I'm, like, I'm, oh, I'm probably going to lose to an expert if I play again. So. <laughs> just like oh my last tournament game oh it's just a just a casual win against your malinsky yeah it's a, don't, don't worry about it <laughs> when yeah, was that, that? Was like, i don't know that was I like three, who... three, it was like three years ago uh odali odali is asking also yeah yeah mm -hmm. so your your malinsky alexander your malinsky right yes yep. your mo yeah he Russian... used to make videos on the internet Right? Yeah, he's famous. Uh, every Russian schoolboy knows, and yes. his really deep voice. Yeah. He would say yeah. "good time of day" to all the viewers. I remember <laughs> the beginning of the videos. <laughs> Good time of day to you, he would say. <laughs> don't be like that, Josh. What? What, what is he doing? being like? What did I do? I think he's just being like Josh. Maybe it's "don't be like that, Josh." Maybe there's a different Josh that we're. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> But yeah, I think Bishop C three was was definitely our our favorite move in this position. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. black seems maybe worse. I don't know, because we don't like that. I guess we we're not a fan of the queenside pieces at this point. Well, maybe the knight's not that bad, but the, the rook the and the bishop are kind of frustrating. Arguably. Like it's hard to do much with them at the moment. Yeah, knight before. Yeah, the rook and the bishop are are sad. It seems. Okay, so she did play knight before. Yeah, so I I think she definitely she definitely saw the e six threat. And she knows that she has to do something about that. Sarah's very tactically aware. 
Yeah. Evidently. So I'm expecting King B2 then. I mean, I guess there's an argument for King B1 because then you're not like on the same diagonal as the dude on G7. But on the other hand, then your your bishop on C3 is not defended. So I think King B2 is like the more harmonious move, maybe. I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, King B2 looks good. Looks good to me. Um, and then, yeah, well then what does she do with her king, though? Because she still can't castle. So what Thank is you move? for the raid from Mr. Chuck Moulton. Nice, very cool. Yay. What was what were you up to? Were you do this is a rare situation where I missed the Chuck stream because I see most of his streams. I'm assuming that he was probably covering some of the Bug House Championship games over on the Green Pawn website. Oh, they have a Bug House Championship going on. Yes, and there's DJ Chess Talk. Okay. Hello, Mr. DJ Chess Talk. Wow, it's just it's a party. Oh wait, that's cool. <laughs> Chuck says I recognize that voice. Yes, Chuck was also at the World Open. Nice. And I've played Bug with him many, many times, so that would be another way that he would recognize it. It would be very worrying if he didn't, actually. <laughs> the last qualifiers of the Bug House World Championship. Who uh who qualified? Because I actually don't know who was even playing in the match. I would have watched if I were not assigned to commentate the thrilling match of the Hermen. <laughs> is Tice playing in that? Does anybody know? Uh, that seems like a question for Mr. Oh. Chuck. Yeah, I know Tice, yeah, is, Tice is quite a decent quite a decent bug house player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've played bug with him over the board before plenty. He's uh, nice. he do be strong. I don't know where Chewy went. Chewy was in the chat before. Chewy oh, was also a, a beast that Tice, didn't play. Tice did not play this Tice year. Tice did not play. No. Well, then how can it really be a championship then? <laughs> okay. DJ Chess Dog is just doing emotes. Seems about right. He couldn't find a partner he liked. Oh, I see. Ah, okay. So yeah, I think this is kind of uncomfortable for Black. Um, I agree. She, yeah, I mean, she might, uh, she might have to have to play uh, Pavlikic's move, Bishop C8. That's a possibility. Yeah, because you, like you already played played the uh, Rook B8, so you're not gonna move it anywhere else. Well, so you're saying that you just wouldn't want to play Bishop B7 because the Rook is like, is there any like regrouping where you go Rook B6 and then you go Bishop B7? What? Like, is that? Ah, oh, you could. Is that defend, a thing? But you'd have to defend the. Uh... I don't know. D7? If Rook D6, well, I'll probably just play A3, though, and make you uh, go back. Uh, yeah, well, maybe not. Go back to C6, maybe, yeah. But A3 yeah, is yeah. weak. Then I can claim yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, so it might be it might be worth it. Um, I don't even know what I'm claiming, yeah. though. <laughs> Chewy qualified th through... Th Chewy qualified, though, in the first open qualifier. Yes, Mr. Chewy is very good at Buckhouse. I have partnered him many, many times, and he has carried me to many victories. Nice. Chewy plays piano very well. That's also true. What would Karyakin do, says uh, Lucy Moody? Uh, I actually don't know. I mean, maybe you could ask him. It's hard for me to guess what Karyakin would do. Is that maybe a reference? Like, is there a specific game where Karyakin did something that's possible in this position? I, he would, I don't know. He would uh, write a Twitter rant, yeah? Yeah, who knows what he would <laughs> yeah. rant about. Tristan says, I miss Tice. Very edgy one. Karyakin finally unbearing. Such a cool dude, Kappa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Karyakin may be more mm. liked than us right now. Right? <laughs> uh, uh, I do not know. Oh, man. Well, it... In the Western world, I don't know. There are definitely some people who are somewhat defending Hans. Uh, Karyakin yeah. is. Is there anyone defending? I don't know. Yeah. Not in the not in the West, probably. Not Can in I the see. West. Hashtag Team Hans. <laughs> so another. I mean, maybe she just wants to go King E7 and just connect the rooks. Ah. It might be. And that would be right helpful here. towards what we were discussing previously, because it gets you closer to winning at King of the Hill, because we need to win as many variants as possible. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Right. 
Right. That's what King B2 is a bad move. See, this is what happens when I don't know what to contribute from the chess standpoint. I try to make a <clears throat> silly doofus joke. Yeah, it seems like yeah. a good strategy. Yeah, King. Yeah, maybe. I, I guess King E7 is is uh, it's probably what I would like to play <laughs> for for a like about a millisecond. I was thinking about King E7 somehow like. Rook d7, then e6, then bishop takes g7. It does nothing, even. <laughs> but it's just <laughs> silly. Like <laughs> I, I, I calculate, you know. It's flashy though. It's very flashy. Yeah. I like yes. It. What's wrong with being cringe? Says somebody. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I think I'm pretty cringe. I'm a doofus after all. I hope that's not too wrong. Twenty-two game streak. Twenty-two, really? Man. I mean, I've had streaks like that, but against like, you know, 18, 1900s or whatever, not against 24, jeez, 2500s. Hey, are you <laughs> 1900s? That's definitely the best streak. Like, I thought it was the, the cool ever. thing. I thought it was the coolest thing ever when I, I won 10 games in a row with white at some point. I adopted black, but the strongest player that I played was like probably lower rated than Sarah. Like, it was, I didn't even play anybody who was higher rated than me at the time. Like, I just, I didn't play any masters or anything. So. I was like, <laughs> yeah, Josh, did they have uh, what kind of like uh, security measures did they have three years ago? Three years ago, um, I mean, there were no in which yeah, tournaments, no though? Detection. Yeah, the tournaments that I played in, I mean, there was no there was no detection or anything. They just um, was there a broadcast? They just no, uh, well, was there? Not that I'm aware of, because Iowa was where I played. Iowa, I, I beat Yermolinsky and and I am, and uh, they didn't have any. No, there was nothing. It was just. Um, but I think they. I think they did stipulate that you're not supposed to have your phone. I mean, that's just always a rule anyway. But mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that they they specifically said that. Um, but uh, besides that, no. I mean, there's no metal metal detector or anything, and you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually don't remember oh. ever playing in a tournament where I was metal detected. I don't remember that ever happening. <laughs> and I've played no, in the, no. I mean I've I've played in the Washington International, I've played in the Philadelphia International and the World Open and they never did any of that. Cuz there I mean honestly really? there were too many there were too many players. I mean, the organizers they would <laughs> I think they just logistically they're just like, you know, screw this. This isn't Wait, at least we never possible. Metal detected? I don't think that I've ever had to play. I, I don't think I've ever played in a chess tournament where I had to do that. No, I don't. I don't remember that ever happening. I got metal detected. Wait, wait, wait. What? Nice. Oh, Tag Tagbon is asking me about when I played in the in the pro chess league whether they had a uh, security measures. Yeah, they had. Um, number one, you always had to be on camera when you're playing. You you were logged into um, I don't know what is it Zoom. Yeah, you're always logged into Zoom, and you had a camera on you and. Uh, and then when we got to the playoffs, uh, I had a pro I had to have a proctor as well because I didn't live like the rest of the guys on the St. Louis team, you know, like uh, Fabi and all those guys. I think they would usually just play like at the club, uh, at the St. Louis Chess Club, so they could just um, all be watched by whoever was there. Right, and I was in Colorado, and actually Shirley uh, was nice enough to come over and proctor my games. Very in the nice. Playoffs. So, yep. Yeah, so that That's was so that was cool. So yeah, Shirley says, uh, I didn't say they were strong, mostly beat Daniel and Sarah. Yeah, but that's still, Daniel and Sarah are stronger than the people that I beat when I had a 10-game winning streak, and this dude had a 22-game streak or something. So that that's just, that's crazy. Did anyone meet Hans in person? I have met Hans in person numerous times, but they were all more than five years, or not five years ago, more than four years ago, I guess. Uh, yeah, nope. I so never met him in person. Actually, my last loss was to um, Tatev, Tatev Abrahamian. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, and and then I and then I that's when my winning winning streak started because I was I was super annoyed that I lost because I, I had black in in a night orf and I had uh, I think it was like plus five like a really nice position that I and I played like the even more the, the really irritating thing was I played really well and then I just like I used all my time and blundered horrifically and lost <laughs> like lost really no, badly geez. feels bad man and then Jesse Cry made fun of me oh he. Uh, he was like, "Dude, you lost to a girl." <laughs> he said it he as did? a complete, yeah, as a complete oh, joke. You know? <laughs> it was a complete joke, but um, oh, I was like, "Yeah, I lost to a girl." She's a twenty-four hundred, like was, very strong player. Yeah, was that the same tournament where Daniel was winning against Jesse Cry and then declined the draw for when he was winning? Yeah, like, of, like of course yeah. you should, but then went on to lose because it yeah. became complicated. Yeah, I remember. I'm, I know I'm, a little bit I'm of the lore. Sure. <laughs> 
I mean, much, much happier uh, with Daniel, though. I mean, it, it really yes. is better just to end up yes. losing that game than take a Absolutely. draw on a winning Totally, game. completely. Just, yeah. 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 Jesse Cry has been to the, uh, the, the chess club that, uh, that I uh, played at today because he, I think he either, I, I don't know exactly what his situation is, but I think that he has spent some time living in Baltimore. So he made an appearance at that chess club at some point. So I've spoken to him a bit, but I've never played him. I've played a yeah. bunch of people who have been coached by him, though. Yeah, yeah, I think I have also. Uh, yeah, he was really he was he was a lot of fun during that tournament, though. He, like he he stayed after, and you know we looked at a lot of games. It was like uh, Jesse Cry, Danny Wrench won the tournament, and uh, this is the Denver Open, uh, like three three years ago, maybe four. And uh, yeah. yeah, they Danny Wrench, Jesse Cry, uh, D- uh, David Vigorito, another strong I am. Um, and they all hung out. We hung out for a long time after the tournament, and that was mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm assuming that Knight C6 here. I mean, maybe Knight A6, but I don't know what the heck you're doing with that guy afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I'm definitely not too happy with Black's... Uh, Black's minor pieces are just not doing that well in this position. The bishop on G7, the bishop on B7, the rook, and also the rook on B8. I remember when one, one interaction that I had with Jesse Cry a long time ago was when he uh i was uh <laughs> <Shalata. laughs> i was playing in a tournament i played a a, a guy named uh, ryan frank who's a local player to me he was like 1900 and i played him and Ooh. i won and uh after afterwards we went to the skittles room we did a post-mortem and jesse cry came in because cry was coaching ryan frank and he was saying various things and it was kind of cool but what was nice was i was like 2000 at the time but jesse trusted all of my calculation it felt so good. It was like nice. <laughs> because I didn't nice. I didn't know what I was talking about, but Jesse was like, "Yeah, you're probably pretty good at calculating. I think you you know <laughs> you're probably right about that. I'm just going to show you this idea. I'm not going to calculate this. Like you're probably I was like, oh cool. This is the t-. <laughs> he was very humble. It was it was it was funny. I mean, I was probably totally yeah. wrong about everything I said, but <laughs> he was a friendly dude. Yeah, yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he was really he was really funny uh, during that tournament. Yeah, Hans at the World Open, he would play a lot of bug house, so Chuck would definitely have encountered him many times as well. Yeah. And did he he won the last World Open, didn't he? Yes, yes, he did. Yeah. Okay. And they had I I know I watched a video where he had a playoff against um I think it was John Burke, I think is who Yeah, that sounds right. I mean I was there, but I wasn't paying attention to the playoff. At that point I was just yeah. I, I withdrew after round seven or something because I tilted out that was one of the very few times in my entire life i've withdrawn due to performance and i said screw it i'm just gonna play bug with chuck all the time so Wait, <laughs> i just want to play bug guys you with two the, the world, world open is actually i think the only tournament i uh no i think there are two total but yeah i i withdrew from the world open uh it was the only major tournament that I ever withdrew from for performance i was just doing yep. like yep i could not sleep like, at all like i was just completely awake and yeah my play was just it's just terrible. Yeah, no, I was. I, was like, I, I think it was in 20, 2015. Yep. Yeah. See, for me, it was that was that was last year. That was in twenty twenty one, and I was trying to get to NM, and I had the mm-hmm. worst tournament. It was disastrous. I I played I played against uh, in in round one. I forgot all my prep and got destroyed. In round three, I got the same opening that I got in round one against Rochelle Wu, and I got everything perfect. Oh, okay. Everything. I was up a pawn at the opening. I was doing great, and then I totally like threw because I'm an idiot. So after that, it became apparent that I wasn't going to get to 2200, but that didn't, that wasn't the whole thing. I mean, I just, I just blundering things. It was so tilting. So I decided to go play bug yeah. with Chuck. That was, that was a good decision. <laughs> this year I was at the world. Open. Yeah. I didn't play the tournament at all. I just hung out. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I kind of like, I've played in the world open, I think maybe three or four times. And I always secretly wanted to just hang out in the like the skittles room and the oh, man where they're it's, all playing it's a great and, yeah yeah I, like i always kind of wished i could just stay there when i was in there no, for me yeah when i did that this year like i got to see all my friends uh and i just i didn't have to stress about a game or anything i played so much bug house i saw sammy i saw chuck i saw chewy i saw blast trip i saw everybody it was just it was a great yeah. time i'm happy that i didn't play because the, the, i think it would have been stressful and it's expensive as hell <laughs> right it was it was uh it was a lot of fun you know and it's not too annoying yeah. for me because i live in baltimore and it's in philadelphia so it's a one one hour and change oh, train ride it's not that bad nice that's pretty cool 
I remember I went there with Brian uh, one time uh, many years ago. God, I, I don't even remember what year it was. Anyway, many years ago, and Brian just stayed up. He stayed up all night. He was playing in the tournament, and he had drawn, I think, the, like on Saturday night. No, on Friday, on Friday, he had drawn against Nakamura. But this is so long ago, Nakamura was like 2450. He was a 2450 IM. And I don't know, he's probably three years old. But uh, he was a 2450 IM. And Brian held a rook ending. It was, he was down a pawn. It was rook and pawn versus rook, but uh, Nakamura had a, a knight pawn. So Brian could have just defended. He could just leave his king. His king was already in front of the pawn, too. So he could just leave his king there and just move his rook back and forth on the first rank, and it's, there's absolutely nothing your opponent can do. But instead, he made it really complicated because he didn't know that, but he still managed to hang on. <laughs> and then okay. we showed the game to, to Pal Banco, and Pal Banco was just like making fun of Brian. He's like, uh, <laughs> why are you doing all this theatrics? <laughs> what are you doing? You could just sit on the back rank and we were, oh, yeah, it was pretty funny. It's really nice because you, you, there are a lot of legends just all over the place at these things. Yeah, we, okay, yeah. we made a mistake yeah. here because we dismissed a very valid move that Black could have played. Although now White has two bishops, but we didn't even really talk that much about bishop f3. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. if the bishop was going to just sit on b7, I guess there's an argument for that. I am a big two bishops guy, so I would probably be a little hesitant to do that, but it's a valid move. We didn't even talk about it, so my bad. I, yeah, I think I think it definitely makes sense. Because, uh, I mean, otherwise, yeah, if she's going to put the knight on... She has to put the knight on c6, then yes, let's trade the bishop off. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's... I like it. I think it's a good move. I would still take white in this position, though. I God, mean, he has... going to watch the yeah. thought, and they're going to be like... <laughs> just <laughs> this is all the time talking about all kinds of stories didn't even analyze the move that happened like what did you even get these commentators for this is so useless like dude we're gonna get banned that, 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 that's just, hilarious yeah okay i'm sorry you guys watching the vod afterwards that i didn't do my job correctly i just encouraged josh to tell all kinds of cool stories instead you're sidetracking <laughs> you're avoiding the fact that you you withdrew from a tournament that Haas was playing in yeah, I was in the section too. I was in the open section. Yeah, I could have played I him in theory. I mean, it's a bit sus. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, I had after three rounds, I had zero point five out of three, and I believe Hans had two point five out of three. So I was never going to get paired against. <laughs> you never <Right>. know. <laughs> and he could beat me blindfold, upside down, in his sleep, with his hands tied behind his back, so he'd have to just use his nose to make the moves. Anything he could beat me, so. <laughs> He'd have to use his yes, you know. right. right. Yeah, I mean, I I just gave a simul today, and it makes you feel like you're the strongest player in the history of the world when you do that. But then at the same time, you have to realize there are some guys who would beat you, like you know, a hundred to nothing. And uh, you know, yeah. they're just there are just so many legends in chess. It's gotta stay humble. I think that White has okay. White has to defend at some point the pawn in e five. Maybe you could still chill and then you know rookie one, but Black mm -hmm. is probably gonna. F4? You know, put some more pressure on that. So I'm wondering if now, right, exactly. Now that we don't have a knight on f3 anymore, if white considers going f4 at some point, that seems like a valid thing. And also, because then maybe you could think in some lines about, I don't know, I mean, you, you guys tell me, but maybe you could put that, that seems to work well with the light bishop. You could put it even on like g2 or something. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's silly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty reasonable. Actually, right now though, I, I'm actually I'm thinking of the move bishop h3 uh -huh. because I want oh, to yeah. force the rook to go to d8 because the rook is just you know seems very passive, and then probably f4 after that. Uh, good tempo. Yeah, hmm. that's what that's that's what I'm thinking, and I was thinking about g5 from black, but then. Um, I don't know, just rook g1 is probably just bad. Um, so, but yeah, bishop h3, uh, cause I, I like a lot to, to try to tie the rook down to the. Uh, so, to if we eight. think that things are really bad for black after bishop h3, do we ever consider just knight d4 and sacking a pawn and claiming opposite color bishops? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely, yeah, that's definitely an idea. Let's see. Okay, Chilada says the commentators are definitely overpaid. Yeah, I. Uh, I, I made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I should be fired. 
Absolutely. I'm quitting. Before <laughs> Pavlovich submitting his letter of resignation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Rook D5 is also an idea that yes, um, yes. Darko, Darko Twitch 1 has. Yeah, I hadn't really considered that, but yeah, Rook yes, D5 is... a good move, Darko Twitch 1. Yeah. Yep, that is definitely a possibility. Or uh, D5, yeah. huh? I like referring to people by their you know full usernames when it's just like <laughs> random, like Darko Twitch one. Thank you. <laughs> Good move. Yeah, Rook D five is pretty annoying. Definitely a pretty annoying move. Um, hmm. Well, okay. So if we if we just if we realize that we're just in bad shape, then Knight D four is like the sort of bailout. Maybe I can try to survive opposite colored bishop sort of situation i don't know that we can survive that though if we're black uh but maybe yeah, that is like an option because i don't what are our alternatives to that i mean rook d8 is like it oh wait after rook d5 rook d8 doesn't make any sense bishop h3 rook d8 is probably the only way to actually defend the pawn right so these are some like really uncomfortable yeah, yeah. things like i don't know what's yeah, the only, really. what, how do we defend the pawn after after rook d5 because bishop f8 e6 might be a thing i don't know or anything it looks terrible bishop f8 there's no way that looks so yeah it looks awful yeah. so we probably can't even defend the pawn i mean so we no, might have to uh, do something like knight d4 but then uh, you're still going to be losing a pawn how about rook d5 how about we just we just castle and then if you take on d7 i can at least take on e5 and try to get some some counterplay and if you take Actually, on c5 then, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. So hold on. Rook, rook d5, maybe knight d4 makes more sense than I was giving it credit because if you take, you can't take twice on d4 right away because there is bishop e5. And you also can't take on c5 because then black could take on b3. So maybe that could be a thing. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Rook d5, knight d4. And we do just have to take, right? All right. Bishop h3. Bishop so bishop h3. The quad yeah, is playing the Yash move. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Gelato says, "I'm going to change my username to Hans Neiman Fen for 2069 soon. Uh, that could already be taken. I wouldn't I, be shocked. I would be surprised if that isn't already taken. <laughs> yes, possibly by Hans. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. So I think Rook D8 is forced." Don't really see any other moves here. Well, again, I mean, they could just uh, sack the pawn. Okay, so yeah, knight d4. Knight d4 is the other move. Yeah, which might be maybe his best, actually. Yeah, knight d4. Knight d4 is actually, I, I actually like quite a bit. I mean, yeah, what does. Uh... Well, rook d8 looks very miserable. And white always has the, the same yeah. idea. I mean, white could always go with uh, rook d5 in a future position as well. So, I mean. It's yeah. uh, it's even like a, only a temporary solution going rook d8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, um, so yeah, knight d4. I mean, okay, white has to take on d4, I believe, right? Unless b4 is a move. Yeah, b4 could be a but, move though. Uh, maybe it doesn't possibly. make sense. Right. Maybe it doesn't make sense, but it, it probably exists. But yeah, I think that d4. taking on d4 would be the most logical choice for sure. Yeah, and then yeah, I yeah. guess uh black oh wait hold on so if we take twice on d4 there's no bishop e5 because there's rook h there's rook e1 yeah, i forgot right, about that. Right. so that that is important it's very tricky yeah so very tricky where is this this sorry yep sorry to get back okay 94 yeah we're looking at 94 because rook d8 is too sad too passive Right. Well, I think after this, White could still do the rook d5 oh, thing, and then yes. the rook is just the rook is just on d8. Castles. Oh, okay. she just castles. So she's okay. just saying, yeah, okay, we I can't deal with these pawns right now. Like, like sure. Attack. And also, it does it does attack the pawn on e5. So you know, yeah. there's a there's yeah. a point there. Yeah, rook rook d8 would have been would have been pretty pretty a very sad move to to have yeah. to make. So. Wait, so did okay. all three of us just not even consider castles? We were talking about all kinds of other things. Did we just... I think you considered castles in rook d5, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah. Go with, we'll go with that, yes. I think, <laughs> they, I know, but... I think one of you said 
Castle well, Castle okay, so uh, so Rook D five could be a move here. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks kind of annoying. You could also just play F four if you wanted. Um, that is just like a a move that's always a thing because we kind of wanted to do that to defend our E five pawn. Yeah. So this is yeah, this is uh, it's pretty interesting. I think Thez is going to take the W here. Thez, so hack, I'm assuming. <laughs> I see. Well, if that's referring to to Zefcat, well, I will see that uh, Sarah is playing moves that I'm like barely even seeing or just outright missing. So yeah, it's possible. <laughs> uh, I'm silly. So I mean, now the game mm -hmm. is going to get very interesting, right? Because yeah, I, th I think this is a big. Big decision point for Daniel, actually. I mean, he can play rook takes d7, bishop takes d7, or f4, I suppose. Or maybe rook d5. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, yeah, rook d5 also. Because yeah. f4, there's a committal aspect to f4, oh. uh, because that, I mean, that uh, is kind of rigid. And there could be some future mm -hmm. situation where if black, like, uh, I don't know how it's actually going to happen, but if black, like, played f6 or something, then there could be some weak dudes over there, or even like bishop h6. I don't know. There's some. There are some sure. weak points yeah. of F4. Like it's not uh, it's not an obvious move at all. There are other things to consider. Right. All right. Yep. Definitely. Yeah, this is a big, big decision for Daniel, I would say. The doof correlation number isn't very high for Fez. Don't know if that's a good thing though. Okay, maybe the reason that Chilato is saying that is because I preferred him as Chilato. So then <laughs> Ah, it could be. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was just in the chat one day and I was trying to figure out how to pronounce his username and then i was like okay this is i don't know how to pronounce an ihc at the end of something let me just flip it around and see what happens and i was like whoa th that <laughs> actually makes sense what well, when does the boxing portion come about ask somebody uh and they didn't mention that but maybe if there's a dispute i will see it <laughs> yeah don't they so I mean, yeah. Also, rook h e one is also, I guess, a pretty uh, decent candidate move. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's like a less committal version of f four in some ways. Yeah, yeah, I guess the downside is you can't really like double anywhere after that. But maybe that's not that's not that committal. Like you can you can always move your rooks around. Yeah, that's a very possible move. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the like rook, d, rook takes d seven is pretty forcing. Um, Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. How about let's take a look at this line. Rook takes d7. Yeah. Then, I suppose knight takes e5. Mm -hmm. And it seems I mean we're threatening the rook on d7. We're threatening knight takes c4. So probably rook uh, takes c7 is not good because knight c4. Yeah, imagine. knight c4 seems. Yeah, because we take on c4, and then we can probably take on a3 next move with check as well, and then... Well, then black is at least fine. Actually, they may be better yeah. than fine. This looks this looks good yeah. for black. Yeah, black might be it might be better there. Um, so yeah, so I think rook takes d7, knight takes e5. It seems like black is doing... Black's doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Chilato says, isn't yeah. Zeph a karate disciple? Maybe she could challenge Andrea Botes to some chess martial arts contest. I have no idea about this. I don't know. Yeah, sure. I, I, I know she i know she's taken she took karate when she was a kid I, I don't know i'm not sure i've never seen any skills demonstrated though so i i don't know well we're also not talking about the you know the the boxing martial art attacking skills of the quadruped i mean he is a he is That's a big true. strong well-fed quadruped he does those <laughs> exercise classes he knows what's up that is, that's true those yoga classes uh i don't know he he does I don't know uh, what, I don't know what a lot of cardio doing. i think yeah gym, okay. classes at the gym though like uh, jazzercise or something like that i don't know <laughs> plays jazz? Yes, he would be a a scary opponent to face in a chess boxing match <laughs> i bet the quadruped does some insane crossfit workouts what's a jazzercise as somebody uh I don't know. I'm assuming it's a, something that involves jazz and exercise. Yeah, yeah. That's that's as far as I yeah. <laughs> 
So also, bishop takes d7, knight takes e5 looks pretty, pretty okay mm -hmm. for uh, for black as well. I would say. Mm-hmm. I think it's probably all right. Yeah. Because same threat. Okay, so we're imagining that white is not actually going to take on on d7. That they would rather try to hold the the e pawn and then try to win black's weak pawns later is probably the better yeah. strategy. So moving the rook then, right? Maybe or f4, but there are problems with f4. F4 could be could be weakening. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, rook d5. What do we what do we play? Oh. Well, uh, maybe this is one of those moments where we try to get counterplay with like an f6 type move or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. That is possible. Oh, f6, maybe maybe just e6. Well, oh jeez. Maybe I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. But maybe knight d4 might be. It might be bad. Knight d4 right now. Yeah, knight d4 is definitely a move. Maybe yeah. maybe f6 e6 d6, and then we just <laughs> we just kind of wow. went from right to left. <laughs> yeah, we just we're just doing the alphabet backwards cool. basically. But then white is basically after that white's in six one because they can't play c6, so black wins because they can't <laughs> right. they can't continue the train. Yeah. Yeah. But also, I mean, black black will play like ninety seven probably, and uh, no, that's unironically probably a good move because I think the e pawn could be weak. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. So okay, so e six, yeah, e six is not good after f six. It looks like so. Okay, so f six. What do we play? Well, okay, but there okay. is an obvious downside of this move, which is that I'm no longer my bishop is not open, so there's probably fewer. There are probably fewer ideas like with uh taking on e5 is probably less dangerous for white to deal with yeah but yeah, maybe it's sure. still valid because you know you get some counterplay against those f pawns what happens if you just take on f6 he, he just played f4 so well i think that's what black would want there Pavlikic. i mean bishop takes and then yeah black would yeah, trade the bishops sure. and then they would attack the the dudes on the the f file Okay, yeah, just to show, right? Yeah, sure, yeah. You trade. That seems, that seems like that seems like what Black wants. I, I bet the best line is probably not that. I see. Yeah, going into an end game of. Mm -hmm.